Hello everybody and Happy New Year! My name is Nick or your typical and today in this video I'm going to be covering how to grow super fast on YouTube the 2016 version now that it is 2016 and if you have not already how to gain 1000 subscribers on YouTube. Now this tip will help or these tips in this tip video will help anybody at any subscriber range. However, if you haven't hit 1,000 subscribers, it will be really important that you watch this video because there's a big difference between hitting 10 subscribers or 100 subscribers and then hitting 1,000 subscribers. It's a whole nother level up on YouTube. It takes a whole nother set of skills and effort. And so you're probably going to want to watch this video and figure out how to do it for yourself. A lot of people might be wondering, why should I listen to you and not a 100,000 subscribers? YouTuber. Well, there's a lot of reasons. First off, I give a lot of these tip videos. I know what you guys want to hear because I get all this feedback saying, oh, give me this tip, give me this tip, how do I do this? And so I'm going to try to compile all those tips together to help you guys out. And also, I've recently been in your situation. I've recently been at 100 subscribers or a thousand subscribers trying to get up to where I am right now so I thought I'd give you guys my tips because it's really helpful listening to someone who's recently been in the YouTube community because it changes a lot and if you guys want to hear more tips about growing your YouTube channel I have a ton of tips on my channel like I said I upload YouTube tips weekly so if you want to subscribe for more of those because subscribing to my channel will help you grow your own channel. Also, don't forget to leave a like on the video if it does help you out. Alright guys, so the biggest thing about growing on YouTube is what you should not do on YouTube. Because as long as you do everything right, even if you do these few tips wrong, then you're going to screw up your whole channel. Because these few tips are vital in not messing up your YouTube channel. Because you can mess your YouTube channel up if you accidentally go against these few rules. First off, do not sub for sub. I cannot stress this enough, guys. Last year in my video, there were so many people in the comment section that tried to start sub for sub centrals because they thought that would help grow their viewers on their channel. The next tip I have for you guys is do not spam in comment sections. This is the other big thing I saw in my last video. If you spam in your comment sections, especially if it's on bigger YouTubers with super loyal fans, you're going to get a bunch of hate on your channel and you're going to earn a negative reputation for yourself. You do not want a negative reputation on YouTube, especially if you start growing bigger. People are going to be like, hold on. Wait a second, is that that guy who I saw spamming in that T Martin video a few years ago? And then you're gonna be exposed or whatever. Um, even though it might seem irrelevant at the time because it's a few years later, you don't wanna have that bad reputation. You don't wanna do bad things on YouTube that people remember you for. So try to keep a good reputation and grow the best way. The true way. Next up, guys, I wanna cover mass giveawaying because this is something that grows your channel a ton and subscribers again but viewers does it grow your channel not really like you can do giveaways every other video and people are going to be like "Ooh, i want that ps4 yeah Ooh, i want that gamma whatever but they're just going to subscribe to you they're going to favorite that video they're going to like that video and then you're not going to get any favorites you're not going to get any likes and then when you do a video without like a giveaway you're going to get absolutely no support and it's going to be heartbreaking. So don't break your own heart, guys. Like, keep that thing intact. I hope you guys like my Men in S hoodie. Um, but keep that thing intact and make sure if you do a giveaway, make sure it's for something special. Make sure, hey, thank you guys for 1,000 subscribers. I really want to give back to you. Um, today, I'm going to be giving away this Black Ops 3 game right here. So make sure it's for something special. Don't just do giveaways galore. Next two tips actually both have to do with big YouTubers. First off, do not make like fake big YouTuber Twitter accounts and start scamming people like maybe, oh, if you go subscribe to my friend here, I'll give you a shout out or I'll give you a follow because they're going to be believing, oh, you're FaZe Rain, you're Norton Shad. 
But you're not. You're not Norton Chat. You're just some random guy who's making you subscribe to his new channel. So don't do that, guys, because eventually you're going to get in a lot of trouble and nobody's going to think of you in a positively way. Also, don't spam big YouTuber tags. That will go over into a do later when I'll talk a little bit more about tagging your videos. But do not spam big YouTubers in your tags. First off, like, especially if it's in the description, if it's in the description, you can get a, um, I believe it's a YouTube service claim, and then you're gonna get in a lot of trouble on YouTube. Trust me, strikes are not fun on your YouTube channel. Try to stay away from them. Copyright strikes, terms of service strikes, whatever it is, like, don't spam your tags and stuff like that, because then you're gonna get one of those things. Now the final don't I have for you guys on YouTube today is don't ignore old friends and don't be a complete jerk on YouTube. When you start growing your channel, you're going to see all these new people who want to subscribe to you because you're this big new YouTuber and you're going to find all these new YouTubers to collaborate with and then you might leave your old friends in the dust. Don't do that guys. They were there to support you, and your old fans, they were there to support you one time as well, so don't just ditch them. Comment back to them. Reply to them. Make sure you still stay in touch, because you don't want to, again, seem like that asshole of YouTube. You want to have a good reputation. So guys, don't, don't be, be jerks to your old friends. Don't be jerks to your old subs. Alright, so a lot of people are probably going to ask me, Nick. What equipment should I use for my YouTube channel to help it grow? Now, the problem with asking this on such a general growth video is going to be there's going to be a ton of people from different varieties of entertainment coming to watch this video. So, I can't give you certain equipment that you need to use. However, I can suggest something. There's plenty of YouTubers out there with equipment in their descriptions of like detailing what they use and this is probably the best equipment if they're pretty successful with their YouTube channel. So check out somebody that you trust like oh this is some really good quality stuff. What am I going to have to use to become like them? What am I going to have to use to produce those high quality videos? So if you're a vlogger, maybe go look at some big vloggers. If you're a gamer, you can just look at my description. I have all my equipment in the description down below. And if you guys are wondering about editing software, since this is more universal, I use Sony Vegas Pro 13. It's really helpful, and it may take some getting used to, but once you understand how to use it, it is a great software. You can also use Adobe After Effects and Final Cut, and maybe even like Windows Movie Maker and iMovie. Alright, now I want to talk about YouTube motivation because YouTube motivation is a key part in growing your YouTube channel because without it, you're not going to be able to grow it because your heart, your soul, it's what creates the YouTube videos. Obviously, you have your gameplay, you have your audio, whatever you're putting together in your video obviously truly makes your video, technically. But seriously, if you don't have any motivation, then there's no reason to do this YouTube thing, and you have to remember that. Like, if I'm not feeling motivated, then I have to find a way to feel motivated. Otherwise, I probably should take a break, because it's it's gonna get hard, and I suggest not taking a break all the time, but like, if you're not enjoying it, and it's been like a year, guys, just take a break. Like, sometimes that's all it takes to regain your motivation, but seriously, you don't want to be doing this thing if you're not motivated. And it's awesome to feel motivated, right? Like, oh man, I'm gonna pump out all these YouTube videos. And, you know, sometimes all it takes to get a little motivated is, is to watch an inspirational video or something like that. So, if you're feeling down, like, take a chill pill, watch some inspirational videos, and sometimes that's what it takes to get better. But other times, you know, you have these stuck points on YouTube. And I wanted to talk about that because I really touched on that last, uh like advice video and I was talking about how we always had these stuck points but every youtuber has these stuck points we can't think oh this is the death this is the end of my channel because I'm not growing right now and I haven't been growing for the past month 
man, dude, I know how that feels. Like, I've been in those points before. I was in that point a few weeks ago or something like that, and then look at me now. I'm growing, like, super abundantly because I sprang out of it. That's the big thing. You have to recover from these stuck points despite a lack of motivation. You have to be tough on yourself. You have to be tough in the mind. You have to realize, Nick, you don't want to regret it later on. You want to do this right now. So later on, you'll be like, I'm glad I stuck with it. I'm glad I pushed myself through that stuck point. But how do you get through a stuck point? A lot of times it just takes pumping out content pumping out a ton of content, re-promoting your channel through however you promote your channel, which I'll talk about later on, but just start promoting your channel more and more. Obviously, sticking to the rules, don't like spam and stuff like that, but go over what you usually do. Give it 200%. If you've been giving it 150%, give it 200%. And just always try to improve stuff with your videos and make it the best you can because seriously, that's how you're going to spring out of it. If you're just making these videos every week or so and you're like, whatever, hopefully I'll get out of this eventually, you're not gonna. During this time, you have to pump yourself up and you have to give as much effort as you can because that's how you're gonna regain motivation and activity on your YouTube channel. So next up I want to touch on what you should make your YouTube videos about because a lot of people are like oh I want to do this oh I want to do this what should I do all these people are growing from this but people are also growing from this oh my gosh what am I gonna do? Do what you want to do guys seriously I'm tired of people just following these trends just because they want to grow on YouTube. Like, obviously, you want to grow on YouTube. Like, no, no crap. But you have to find something that you like doing that also helps you grow on YouTube at the same time. I have a note right here to hone your niche. And basically what I mean by that is find something that you love doing and find something that you're really good at and make it work, like make worth out of that thing. Because if you have this great thing going on here and you work on that and you strive to make that better, then people are gonna see you as that guy and that's how you wanna grow your channel. You wanna grow your channel as an image, kind of like a business. Sometimes you have to think of your YouTube channel as a business. What am I selling right here? What is my content? I wanna hone that niche and I want to grow with that idea. I hear this complete BS in half of the tip videos that I watch. Oh, you have to do something different. That's not true. Oh my gosh, I hate hearing that. Because do you realize how many people do Call of Duty commentaries and how many people are successful with it? Yeah, and some of them pretty much look the same. But what is the reason that so many of them are growing? It's because they're a little different. They have this little touch that they have. They're not completely different because if you try to be completely different, sometimes you just screw it up and do something stupid on YouTube. Like, we, I think we've all tried to do something like completely out of the blue and it was just a bad idea and we thought like, oh, this is so different. This is going to work. But you just have to add your own touch to it. You don't have to make it completely different. This goes along with having your own personality on your channel. Don't be a one-sided conversation. Have a personality and engage with your subscribers. This includes replying to their comments, using annotations, streaming, talking to them on Twitter, all that kind of stuff. Engage your audience. Give them a reason to come back. Let me give you guys an example. Earlier in this video, I said if you guys want more YouTube tips, then you should subscribe to me. So, what did I just do there? I engaged you guys. If you want to keep coming back to my channel, then that's awesome. Here's a reason to come back to my channel. So, I'm trying to engage them. I'm trying to bring them into my YouTube channel. That way, I can actually grow a relationship with them. This will also help a lot more people come back. Like, if I say, oh, I have more tip videos in the future. Oh, I have more life stories in the future. People are going to be like, man, maybe I want to see that. So I'm going to subscribe to this dude or I'm going to add this to my watch later section. Either way, it gets them looking at your channel and that's the start of a subscriber. This also kind of goes along with like annotations, like I said, and content cycling. 
basically making viewers want to watch a ton of your videos and making sure that they do watch your videos. This can be achieved through playlists, annotations, and just sometimes replying to the comments. I see a lot of people asking me in the, in the comment section of my videos, hey Nick, do you have any tips for this or this? And I'm like, yeah dude, here you go. And I link them one of my videos. I also have a short tip showcase playlist. So let's say somebody sees one of my short tip showcases, then they're gonna see all these other tip videos that they probably wanna see because it's related to that video. Or I have my life stories playlist or my live with arrow playlist. And if they liked one of the videos, then they're probably gonna watch through the rest of the videos. And usually when you watch through a few videos, you're like, dang, I want to see this. And then they're clicking subscribe on your channel. All right, since I've been talking a little bit more about the YouTube community and how you're supposed to interact with your subscribers and stuff, I thought I'd talk about how you would interact with other YouTubers. So I have a bunch of uh, little notes here and off topic real quick guys, it's always helpful if you have a longer video that you think it's going to be hard to maybe memorize all your tips or memorize all your key points. It's helpful to have a bullet point list next to you. I'm not saying script your commentaries or script your vlogs or whatever because sometimes that turns into sounding like a robot and you don't want that on your channel because nobody wants to subscribe to a robot. They want to subscribe to you. They want to subscribe to a person. So don't script your commentaries, but bullet points are always really useful. So first off, how do you find your community of friends? Like a lot of people wonder when they first start their YouTube channel, how am I supposed to find somebody to collaborate with? Like, I know these big YouTubers, but I don't know anybody at my size. Well, a lot of times it's just as simple as looking in the comment section of some big YouTubers video because I'm not saying that they're spamming or stuff. I wouldn't recommend like going near spammers because then they're going to try to grow in a dirty way. But you're going to see all these YouTubers commenting because you're going to see their logo or something like that that distinguishes them as a YouTuber. Then you can find them if they have a similar sub range as you, then you can collaborate with them. Networking and collaboration is a big part of YouTube. Networking basically is when you have either a group of friends, a friend, or something like that, and you support each other's videos. It's not just liking and commenting on their videos and linking each other videos. That is such a bad idea of what networking is. Networking is when you support someone else and they support you, not in a forced way, not like, hey, like my video and I'll like it back. Because if someone was doing that just because I was linking them a video, I wouldn't want them to because, you know, that's not how I want to grow. I don't want to grow because I'm linking people videos like, hey, you have to watch this video or else. And there's many different ways to collaborate as well. Sometimes it's just as much as a post or post. That's not necessarily collaborating, I guess, because you guys aren't working together. But, you know, sometimes that helps you grow a lot. I do a few posts for posts every once in a while. So, you know, it's helped me grow a good amount. So I definitely recommend it to you. But even more than post for post uh, are dual commentaries and dual videos when you interact together. Whether it's you both playing in a game lobby in black ops 3 or whether you guys get together for a vlog or something like that when you do videos together it brings parts of both of you and that helps viewers realize oh i really like this guy and this guy's funny too awesome so i'm gonna go subscribe to this guy and maybe i'll see content just like i saw on this guy so a lot of times people will subscribe because they see you having a great time with one of the other youtubers they love a big tip for collaboration I have is become a fan before you become a friend. Now I'm not saying fanboy somebody so hard that like they're like oh man dude <laughs> like stay back from me but I'm saying support somebody's content before you ask them for a collaboration especially if it's a YouTuber bigger than you. I see all these small YouTubers all the time coming up to me with like five subscribers and I've never seen them in my comment section below and sometimes I actually see the subscribe not out of email right before they comment and they're like hey dude I've been a sub for a long time and I'm like actually five minutes but and then they ask for a collaboration and I'm like hold on how am I gonna benefit from this collaboration or 
how have you been supporting me in the past? So I recommend supporting people because people are a lot more open to collaborate with someone they know and someone that has helped support them because they want to help support you back and they want to do it with a friend. Also, social media is essential in growing on YouTube. Twitter is the number one source outside of YouTube for growing your YouTube channel. Just because there's so many times where people will either retweet you or like your tweet or you can gain followers on there that aren't even your YouTube subscribers and then you can notify them about your videos. So that's really helpful in gaining an audience outside of YouTube because then you can bring that audience onto your YouTube channel. There's also plenty of forums, not as many forums as there used to be, but many forums where you can still go, you can make friends, you can make collaborations, and that kind of stuff, and you can also post your channel up for reviews and stuff like that to help make your channel better and to help grow your channel. Alright, so next up, I'm going to talk a little bit about how you get people to click on your videos, because... Obviously, you don't get anywhere on YouTube if people don't actually watch your content unless you sub for sub, which you're not getting anywhere anyways. So basically, first off, I'm going to talk about YouTube tags because YouTube tags are how you rank higher in the search engine, how YouTube relates your videos to other videos that people might be watching. So it's really important that you make your tags about your video. I see a ton of people making their tags maybe about their channel in general or like I said earlier they spam big youtuber tags which is an awful way to try to get people to click on your video or an awful way to try to rank yourself higher in the search because if you're making tags about the big youtubers or whatever their videos are going to be the ones that rank higher in the search not yours so it's going to be a complete waste of a tag. There's no reason in doing it. Half the time, it won't help. Like, actually, all the time. Scratch that half the time. 100% of the time, it won't help. So make sure you're also not making your tags super general. I see a lot of people, whenever they upload a Black Ops 3 tip video, for example, they might say, BO3 commentary, BO3 gameplay, BO3, Black Ops 3. Do you know who's going to show up if people search up those tags? Not you. You are definitely not going to show up. It's going to be the big YouTubers like Ali A and T Martin. But you, with 10 subscribers and 5 views, are not going to show up just because you used the same tags they did. Because they own that market. Once again, like I said, running your YouTube channel like a business, they own that market. They have all that stock share. They're not going to let anybody perpetrate that. So how do you get noticed? How do you rank higher in the searches? Well, you have to make sure your tags are super specific to the video you are making. For example, let's say I make a Black Ops 3 video whatever specialist explains so black ops 3 glitch specialist explains so i'd make my tag something like black ops 3 glitch specialist explain black ops 3 glitch 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 specialist i would make them specific to that title or specific to that video as a whole but i would not make them super general like black ops 3, 3 gameplay commentary even though i would put that as a tag i would not spam my tags with that kind of tag Next up, I want to talk about something that really differentiates the big YouTubers from the small YouTubers and what really differentiates 100 subscribers and then your journey to 1,000 subscribers and that is branding and thumbnails. Now, these both can cause you to gain more subscribers and more views. Thumbnails more on the view side and branding more on the subscriber side. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit but I do have a in detail video about branding and thumbnails that I made just a few weeks ago so if you guys want to check that out there will be a annotation on screen somewhere around here or on my face cam, I don't know, somewhere on the screen you'll see it if you're not on a mobile device but anyways Thumbnails, basically how they increase views. Well, obviously, if you see a bunch of different videos, you're going to look for the one that looks the best. That's what I do. I look for the best titling. I look for the best thumbnails. Those are two things that work together very well are thumbnails and titles because those will catch the viewer's eyes, especially 
the thumbnails. You want to make your thumbnails different. However, you want to make your thumbnails similar to each other. So don't have completely random thumbnails every time just because you think they'll catch somebody's eye, but make sure you go with a certain style whenever you're doing your thumbnails and make sure they will be distinguished from other thumbnails. That kind of goes along with branding, how you should have everything on your channel uniform to each other. That way, people know your look. Like, oh man, that is Aerotypical's logo. I see it on his banner. I see it on his videos. I see it in his actual profile picture. That is Aerotypical. I know that for sure. And all those blue colors, that's Aerotypical as well. So you don't have to have like a uniform color throughout, but you know, if you do, that is just a plus. So like I have blue, most of my channel is themed blue. So that's really helpful in branding my channel as well as my logo throughout. As you guys can see somewhere around here, it's probably on the screen right now. So I also have that in my profile picture, on my banner, that kind of stuff. Next up, we're going to talk about your upload schedule because believe it or not, this has a lot to do with people subscribing because people want a consistent uploader. Uh, they want somebody who uploads at a certain time, certain days, that kind of thing. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit and I'm going to especially emphasize that you don't want to be too consistent and you don't want to be so non-consistent that it's like you're uploading once a month. So I have restrictions that I wrote down here on my little tip note thing so I said no more than two videos a day and no less than one a week and always keep quality over quantity now there's a reason I wrote all three of these things first off no more than two videos a day when you post more than two videos a day unless of course it's a special day so let's say a big game is releasing then there's an exception right there but if you're just posting three videos a day every single day, then that's a little over bit doing it because it's not like people will even have a chance to view all three videos and you're kind of taking up some of your views off of your other videos. So give some of your videos time to rest, give them time to sink in on your channel. So two videos a day is the max that I have down here. I also put no less than one a week because once you start uploading less than once a week then your subscribers aren't really going to expect much from you. It's like those inactive channels that upload every few months. You know, they never know when an upload's going to happen because most of the time when you don't upload more than once a week then you're usually screwing something up and you never have a plan for when you're going to upload and you want to try to stick to at least once a week because I know not many people want to do more than that, especially vloggers. You see all these big vloggers like, hey, I upload videos on Wednesday or hey, I upload videos on Monday and that's awesome. They have a set day every week. So that's what I recommend you guys do if you only upload once or twice a week. Also, make sure you're uploading at a certain time every day. I like uploading between 12 and 3, but that's just me. Sometimes it does get a little bit busy with all the other videos uploading from 12 to 3 in the afternoon. So if you want to change that round, test around different times, what works the best with your audience, then go ahead and do so. It kind of is different between each channel. Some viewers like to watch at different times. So try that out with your channel. Try testing out different times for uploading. I like 12 to 3, but that's just me. And of course, quality over quantity, guys. A lot of times when you do upload like three or more videos a day, you're not truly worrying about quality. Quality is a big thing on YouTube. That's why all these vloggers and stuff can grow so well with only uploading once a week because when they do upload, they make sure it's super high quality content. So definitely don't worry as much about quantity if you're gonna be decreasing your quality in the process. Like. If you're like, oh man, I can't get the daily video out today unless I don't really edit it and just put this commentary over this gameplay. Don't do that, guys. Seriously, it's it's worth it having a better video come out a day late. Alright guys, my last few tips are how to improve your YouTube content. So the first note I have here is try to improve one thing per YouTube video and you won't believe 
how helpful this is once you actually start doing it. Like, my content has improved so much since I started doing this little tip. I tried to improve one thing every single video, so before I render it, I think to myself, what did I improve this video about my content? So maybe sometimes it's adding a watermark, maybe sometimes it's changing up the color correction. Just do something to try to make your video better than it was before. Also, try to watch bigger YouTubers that make similar content to yourself and try to find different things that they do. Maybe if you're struggling with doing one thing per video, maybe go check out a bigger YouTuber and see what they do to improve their content each time, and this will help you improve yours as well. Because there is a reason people are watching them, so why not take a few things from that? Obviously, add your own personal spin on it like I talked about earlier in this video because you don't want to be replicating a channel. You don't want to have the same exact channel as X YouTuber because they can only subscribe to one person. They can only enjoy the content one time. So make sure you add your own little spin on it. Alright guys, well I hope this video did help you out in growing your YouTube channel. If you guys have any recommendations for short tip showcase ideas for my series, then leave them in the comment section down below. I will try to do the videos if I have already done a video similar to what you suggest, then I will link it to you. But definitely feel free to ask any questions down below. If this video did help you, don't forget to smack! A like on it down below and subscribe to me for more awesome YouTube tips on how to grow your channel. This has been Nick or your typical, and I'm out, guys. Peace.